Welcome to RWM Blue Water Ministry. I'm your host, Bob Manuk. Uh, if you enjoyed today's message, I want to encourage you to hit the like button. And if you want to hear more like it, subscribe. Today we are continuing the Church of State series. Today's topic is Chapter 3, The Globalists, Episode uh, 3.1, The Globalist Great Reset. This particular episode uh, will have some controversy attached to it for a number of reasons. I will try to give you a heads up. <clears throat> First of all, this was an episode uh, broadcast by Remnant TV, uh, hosted by Michael Matt. They are a Catholic ministry. I want to point out that I want to point that out because they are critical of certain aspects of the Catholic Church. Secondly, they take a critical view of the World Economic Forum, their leaders and their globalist agenda. Thirdly, they take a positive position regarding former U.S. President Donald J. Trump. You may take that fact alone as justification to stop watching the program, but I, I'm, I want to encourage you to, to, to watch it and, uh, and watch it to the end to see the points that they make. When I first saw this program, it was a huge wake-up call. Do yourself a favor and watch it so, if you can ha so you can have an informed position and opinion on what is happening. The Remnant TV portion is only about 20 minutes long. Not a huge commitment to hear a certain perspective. Many people have heard of the WEF, World Economic Forum, but many only know what the mainstream media uh, has told them. For those who don't know, the mainstream media refers to the establishment journalists and news sources run by corporations who follow a certain narrative. This is your opportunity to hear a different perspective. I now present you with Michael Matt's Remnant TV presentation titled The Great Reset. I will have some closing comments at the end of it. Enjoy. I consider the Trump administration a danger to the world that will disappear in 2020. What if I told you that Bill Gates, Greta Thunberg, Al Gore, George Soros, Prince Charles, and Cardinal Turkson we're meeting in the mountains to plot a global new order to be established on the back of the COVID pandemic. An outrageous movie plot? Or is it absolutely true? Donald Trump and the Davos Connection, tonight from the editor's desk. Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. Michael Matt coming to you once again from the offices of the Remnant Newspaper. Here's something you're not apt to hear on mainstream media. Of the 18 million people in the world who've been infected with the coronavirus, 10.6 million have recovered. This is according to the latest figures from Johns Hopkins University. In other words, the vast majority of COVID patients fully recover. And this doesn't even factor in that the millions who've contracted it recovered and didn't even know they had it. Friends, we need to have a talk. I mean, let's be really clear right from the outset. COVID-19 is not a hoax, okay? Worldwide, over 650,000 people, mostly elderly, have succumbed to it. <laughs> this is not a hoax. Even with skewed death reporting, which we know is going on all over the place, this is a very serious virus. But so was the H1N1, the swine flu of 2009, which claimed the lives of half a million people. So was the Hong Kong flu of 1968, which claimed the lives of up to 4 million people. Flu is a nasty business. Now, do you remember these previous epidemics, pandemics? Probably not. Why? Because the media didn't freak us out over those. The country wasn't shut down. Healthy people were not quarantined. Schools weren't closed. Church services weren't canceled. Why not? Because COVID is a thoroughly politicized virus. And we're getting conflicting recommendations from the experts that get just a little more absurd every week. Doctor, uh, your colleague, uh, Dr. Fauci, has suggested recently that goggles uh, would work even better or in addition to uh, you're talking about masks. People have come around to the reality of that. Are we, are we going to look at more demands based on what Dr. Fauci has said? 
Well, I've seen really great face shields, and I've seen them around the country. You know, I've been out to 14 states. The administration sent me out, and I've gotten to see a lot of exciting face masks out there. And um, face masks that come from the bottom up. And I think that's really, I think people, the American people are innovative. Those are actually pretty easy and straightforward to make. Many universities and those who have um, printers are making face shields now. So these 3D printers can really increase that production. And I think others are making so, them and they can be decorated. So Dr. Well, the dec <laughs> uh, no one's really interested in decorations. Mm -hmm. I want to know whether face shields or goggles is something we're going to hear next. I mean, this, 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 this isn't even funny. I'm so glad to see the guys from Fox over there are, are openly mocking this woman. I mean, people are losing their jobs. They're losing their homes. They're losing their mental health over this. Their kids aren't going back to school. They can't go to church. And this delusional woman with the scarves thinks that we're going to get a kick out of decorating our face shields. This is day 170, I think, of the 15 days to slow the spread, Dr. Burks. Do you have any idea of what the hell you're talking about? Because it changes all the time. No wonder nobody takes these people seriously anymore. And see, so here's the thing, friends. We need to get very serious about it. We need to have a serious conversation about it. Here at The Remnant, we've been saying since March, since the outset of this thing, that it's not the virus that we're questioning. I don't want to get the virus. I know you don't. I know some of you have lost loved ones or friends or whatever from the virus. I've, I've known quite a few folks now who've gotten it. I don't know anyone who died. Everyone who I know, thanks be to God, has recovered. But it was never the virus that's the problem. It's the political exploitation of the pandemic, the COVID pandemic, that really, really must give all of us now serious cause for concern about the future. They're not playing games here. This isn't going anywhere. This isn't going away. And don't take my, for, my word for it. I wouldn't expect you to do that anyway. Let's talk about Davos, Switzerland. Here's where the leaders of the world are admitting exactly what I'm saying, that this is a Trojan horse. Now in Davos, they call it the Great Reset. And it's scheduled now to kick off in January 2021. And if you want to know what's really going on here, if you want to know why the schools are probably, many of them are not going to open in the fall, if you want to know why you're wearing that dehumanizing face mask, even in your car, <laughs> look to Davos. Now is the historical moment, the time, not only to fight severe virus, but to shape the system. We have a unique but rapidly shrinking window of opportunity to learn lessons and reset ourselves on a more sustainable path. What is it that would make it so that history would look at this crisis as the great opportunity for reset. The Great Reset is a welcome recognition that this human tragedy must be a wake-up call. The world's problems fit on three sides of a triangle. It's one versus many, man versus nature, and the unfortunate foundation is long-term versus short-term. Any recovery stimulus should have green conditions attached to it. We have to change our economy dramatically in the next 20 or 30 years and the next 10 years is absolutely decisive. The recovery has to be greener than any of the previous recoveries. And then we need to couple that with new initiatives to equip more people with the digital skills they'll need. We have to live up to the expectations which we have created and we will do so. On June 2nd, 2020, just a few months ago, a couple months ago, the founder now of the World Economic Forum in Davos, Klaus Schwab, wrote an article on their website in which he just comes right out with it. He says that COVID pandemic represents a, quote, rare but narrow window of, of opportunity to reflect, reimagine, and reset our world, end quote. Those are my words. Those are his words. The world must act jointly and swiftly, says Mr. Schwab, to, quote, revamp all aspects of our societies and economies from education to social contracts and working conditions. Every country from the United States to China must participate and every industry from oil and gas to tech must be transformed, end quote. And Mr. Schwab comes right out and admits that he can't do this without, you guessed it, Bill Gates. We are particularly committed to this initiative since the forum has been at the origin in its annual meeting in Davos of the Global Fund 
Gavi and Sepi, together with the Gates Foundation and other founders of those crucial organizations, particularly today. And they're all there. All the movers and shakers of the world are in Davos at one time or another. Even Prince Charles, the insufferable Prince of Wales, got into the act in Davos in January. Unless we take the action necessary and we build uh, again in a greener and more sustainable and more inclusive way, then we will end up having more and more pandemics and more and more disasters from ever, ever accelerating global warming and climate change. So this is the one moment, as, uh, as you've all been saying, when we have to, 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 to make uh, as much progress as we can. And of course, Antonio Guterres, the former Prime Minister of Portugal, who's also a Catholic and is now serving as the Secretary General of the United Nations, he's in Davos chiming in as well. A microscopic virus has closed down entire countries and economies. The Great Reset is a welcome recognition that this human tragedy must be a wake-up call. As you rightly say, it is imperative that we reimagine, rebuild, redesign, reinvigorate and rebalance our world. Friends, the, the full picture should begin to emerge now. And I'm just giving you a sample. I mean, everyone has spoken here. Everyone who is anyone in the globalist community has gone to Davos, has delivered speeches. They come together, they network, they plan our future. This transformation essentially means that the whole way that we do business, that we live, and that we have grown accustomed to in the industrial age, will have to be changed. We will have to leave that behind us in the next 30 years ago. This COVID thing is their golden opportunity. And they certainly don't want Trump or anyone else to fix the problem, certainly not prematurely. And this is what the war on hydroxychloroquine is all about. I mean, think about this. <laughs> Why? You mentioned hydroxychloroquine and you get you get taken off Facebook, you get taken down from YouTube. Why? This thing's been going for 60 years. People use it all the time. Well, if you use it, you might have a heart attack. So we got to condemn that. Then why are they doing this? This is a therapeutic that works for a lot of people. Doctors all over the place are using it right now, but they don't want it. Why? Why? Because it's not a vaccine because it might fix the problem. This is why those frontline doctors in the white coats, that's why they were banned from social media. Many of them are now losing their jobs. They were frontline heroes. And all they did wrong was come out and talk about fixing the thing now. Not waiting 18 months. You're not waiting for a vaccine. But how they're fixing and healing people right now. Doesn't that make you just a little suspicious? Because, see, the problem is these frontline doctors in the white coats, if they're right... And COVID can be cured without 7 billion doses of Bill Gates' vaccine. Well, the Great Reset that they keep talking about in Davos, Switzerland, the Great Reset will be dead on arrival. And all of us will go back to life. Life as we knew it. This is why the 2021 Davos Summit now, 2021, it's coming right up after Christmas. The Davos Summit and the Great Reset. They need President Joe the Catholic Biden to hand us, the United States, over to them if he wins this election. This is why they're trying so hard to take Donald Trump down. Biden is not a serious candidate. We can all agree on that, right? He's not serious. The poor fellow, he's in his dotage now. So what are they doing? They don't want a serious candidate. I'm not talking about on the right. I'm talking about on the left. They don't want someone who's going to be serious. Everyone with a pulse knows Joe Biden can't do this job. What's he doing there then? In my opinion, he's the personified monument to the U.S. presidency that the mob will tear down in January. They need to reset everything, including the politics of the United States, the governance of the United States. Besides that, old Joe the Catholic Biden has always been a New World Order guy. The affirmative task we have now is, uh, is to actually um, uh, create... Uh, uh, a new world order. And of course, friends, yeah, we hear a lot about the Green New Deal and all of that, right? We hear Francis with his Laudato Si encyclical and all of that. They're all working together, aren't they? The Davos 2021 summit works closely with the, something called Climate Reality Project. And guess who runs that? The respected trustee of the World Economic Forum, Albert Gore. This crisis, the climate crisis, is way worse than people generally realize. Way worse. It is getting worse still way faster 
than people realize. The burden to act that is on the shoulders of the generation of people alive today is a challenge to our moral imagination. But this is Thermopylae. This is Agincourt. This is the Battle of the Bulge. This is Dunkirk. This is 9-11. We have to rise to this occasion. I can't believe this guy is still knocking around. It's unbelievable. It's almost, it's almost, it's like a spoof, isn't it? <laughs> it's Al again. I mean, uh, and it's the same. And Davos brings them all in, all the ghouls from the globalist swamp. Our house is still on fire. Your inaction is fueling the flames by the hour. And we are telling you to act as if you loved your children above all else. And of course, drum roll, please. Davos, Switzerland has its elder statesman, George Soros. George Soros's uh, dinner at Davos is a bit of an institution at this event. We do, uh, he usually comes out with strong criticism of something uh, that he feels is troubling for the state of the world. He didn't hold back either when talking about the US president, saying that he was describing him as a con man, an ultimate narcissist. Even the fate of the world uh, could be at stake in 2020 and the years to come as well, perhaps referencing there the upcoming, of course, election in the United States too. So George Soros really, you know, using his platform here at Davos to speak to those, you know, rich and famous who come to the World Economic Forum. Uh, we know that he's uh, in the past has been a major donor to the Democratic Party in the United States. He didn't say anything about which candidate he might be supporting in the Democratic primary, uh, but certainly uh, no holding back on his criticism of President Trump. Okay, what's this all about? I think, you know, I think we all sort of in our hearts, we kind of realize what's going on here. This is not about COVID anymore. This is about a, a reset of everything. And the United States of America is in the way right now of all of it. So they are destabilizing our entire country. The Great Reset, then, politically, economically, it wants to implement massive socialist programs and, of course, global climate change along the lines of the Green New Deal. The regulation is going to be unbelievable, and no one, no country, will be allowed to opt out of this. Why? Well, if an individual country opts out of the Great Reset, they're going to be endangering the whole world community, the whole world through future pandemics that will be caused by climate change, Al Gore says, and overpopulation, says Bill Gates. You see how it works? No country will be allowed to opt out. This is what we're facing in November. <laughs> and if you think the Catholic Church is going to protect you from what's coming from this globalist takeover nightmare, think again. We've been through all this before, leaving aside Pachamama, and leaving aside Laudato Si, which is the encyclical of the globalists, it's the encyclical of the United Nations. I'm sure that we have all read this magnificent, magnificent encyclical that His uh, Holiness Pope Francis has uh, blessed us with. It's the encyclical of AOC. It's the encyclical of the Green New Deal. Leaving that aside, Francis has already announced the global economic reset of his own last year. I don't know what makes this man thinks, think that he's an economist. I don't know where he learned all of this down in Argentina, but he's an amazing guy. He knows everything but theology. Have you noticed that? He already announced his, his coming global economic reset. He calls it, in his humility, the economy Francesco. The economy of Francis. Remember, we showed you a bit of this. I'll show you a little more here. I will come for the economy of Francesco because we need a new economy, a new vision, and the teachings of Pope Francis uh, in Laudato Si and in other teachings help to give us the pathway to a better world. Isn't that something? Now, this was announced last year, mid-2019. It's almost as, as if Francis knew that the COVID pandemic and the resulting economic collapse were coming. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder how he knew that. Isn't that weird? That he was already calling for an economic reset? And poor Francis, he couldn't make it out to Davos back in January when the big party happened. But he did send his representative, the globalist cardinal, Peter Turkson, in his place. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to welcome His Eminence Cardinal Turkson, Prefect of the Dicastery for Promoting Human integral human development of the Vatican city-state with a special message from His Holiness Pope Francis. Your Eminence, it is a pleasure to welcome you back to Davos. The stage is yours. 
This is to Professor Klaus Schwab, Executive Chairman of the World Economic Forum. As the World Economic Forum celebrates its 50th anniversary, I send greetings and prayerful good wishes to all taking part in this year's gathering. Everyone's in on the Great Reset. Well, almost everyone. There's one guy who's got the power to do something to stop it, and you know exactly where I'm going. And they made a mistake. They tried to get Trump on their side, so they invited Donald Trump to Davos, I think a couple of times. But in January, when Donald Trump, I think, really began to see the beast that he was up against, he went to Davos, yeah, to the World Economic Forum, and he stuck a mega finger in their eye. We're committed to conserving the majesty of God's creation and the natural beauty of our world. But to embrace the possibilities of tomorrow, we must reject the perennial prophets of doom and their predictions of the apocalypse. These alarmists always demand the same thing, absolute power to dominate, transform, and control every aspect of our lives. We will never let radical socialists destroy our economy, wreck our country. Two days after Donald Trump gave that speech, the 89-year-old leftist weirdo billionaire George Soros made an emergency intervention where, at Davos once again, warning that the U.S. 2020 election will determine the, quote, fate of the whole world. Now, in the context of Davos, take a look at this one more time. This is a month after Donald Trump addressed Davos and stuck the MAGA finger in their face. Here's what Francis, the Vatican, and Jeffrey Sachs had to say in response. And it is a dangerous country right now. It will be absolutely dangerous if Trump wins re-election. Trump wins re-election. Trump wins re-election. Francis invited this guy to the, to the Amazon Synod as an honored guest and advisor. He's also Bernie Sanders' advisor. What's he doing in the Vatican? Why is this guy who is a promoter for socialist, out and out socialist, Bernie Sanders, what's he doing advising the Pope? Why does he have entree to the Vatican friends? Sachs supports abortion and contraception, but that's not a problem for the Vatican. For the Vatican, for Pope Francis, and for his friends at the UN, Donald Trump is the problem, obviously, friends. Clearly, I consider the Trump administration a danger to the world, but I regard it as a purely temporary phenomenon that will disappear in 2020. Do you get it? Do you see why there's so much hate for Trump? Because with all of his faults, again, he's the capitalist. He's not the globalist. He never will be one of them, which is why he pulled the United States out of the Paris Climate Agreement. Donald Trump pulled the United States out of the World Health Organization. That's Bill Gates and company. And now he's threatening to pull the United States out of the World Trade Organization. People say, yeah, well, Donald Trump got married twice. He's a bad guy. Really? <laughs> he's right in the face of the demons on this, friends. Nobody ever said he was a saint. He's knocking the sacred cows of the United Nations down all over the world right now. The General Assembly routinely votes 185 against the United States on almost everything right now. And you remember, speaking of the United Nations, in November of 2019, again, right before COVID landed, Trump went to the UN on the floor of the General Assembly, and he declared war on globalism. Wise leaders always put the good of their own people and their own country first. The future does not belong to globalists. The future belongs to patriots. And shortly after the speech at the UN, Donald Trump delivered, what do you think happened? The coronavirus was unleashed on the world and Trump's booming US economy went on life support. Do you think that was an accident? So when they tell you, when they tell all of us to stay home, wear your mask so grandma doesn't get sick, please understand what's really going on here. They don't care about your grandmother. They don't care about old people, these people. They don't care about babies. They want them aborted so that they can save the common home. Abort babies, millions of them all over the world. They don't care about babies. They don't care about old people. In fact, if you want to save your grandma, 
tell the globalists to stay the hell away from her. You remember how some of them, like Cuomo and characters like this, were running COVID recovering patients through nursing homes? That's how much they care about grandma. And the name of the game now is to bring the United States economy to its knees, get it out of the way, so that everyone will want the Great Reset. Make the new normal so intolerably abnormal that even you and I, maybe, you know, at some point in the near future, we'll be begging for the vaccines because we'll be driven crazy by that point. Begging for whatever else is going to keep us safe according to our jailers and our handlers and our zookeepers. You see, that's what they want. That's why they keep using this term new normal. You know what we do to fight back? Go to work. Go back to school. If you're healthy, take off the mask. And for heaven's sake, go back to church and pray that Trump wins in November. That's what the reset was. That's what the Russia hoax was all about. That's what, that's what the, the uh, impeachment hoax was all about. Don't you see? For four years, I've been trying to stop this man because if he strengthens America, if he makes it great again, if he brings the economy back again, the reset won't happen. The new world order is going to be set way back. Who knows when they're going to have another COVID opportunity like this one again. And they know it. So I ask yourselves why they hate this man. These folks, these men, they hate God. They hate the unborn. They hate the traditional family. They hate you. And they hate Donald Trump. Whose political opponents, by the way, right now are knocking statues of saints to the ground. They're beating up cops. And they're burning flags. <laughs> you, say, you say you don't like Trump. I'm sorry, friends, but who cares? That doesn't really matter anymore. But you think of Trump's personality or his tweets. Look at the big picture. The choice is simple, friends. Stand with America right now. Or fall with the New World Order in the not-so-distant future. There's no other choice. I'm Michael Matt for Remnant TV, and we'll see you next week. That was Michael Matt and the Great Reset. The WEF is a conglomerate of global billionaires who meet annually to discuss global issues such as climate change, world population, food sustainability, world poverty, immigration, etc. They have an agenda that would eliminate national borders and take a global approach to the social affairs of humanity. Uh, they support a one world government as long as they're the ones governing. Notice that Jeffrey Sachs said, referring to the 2020 election, the US election will determine the fate of the world. They considered it a matter of life and death that Trump must lose the election. George Soros said, Clearly I consider the Trump administration a danger to the world, but I regard it as a purely a temporary phenomenon that will disappear in 2020. Soros said this in January of 2020, speaking of the 2020 election that would be held in November. How could a billionaire say that with any kind of confidence? What did he know when he made this statement? Well, the billionaires had a plan. So, um, here, here, is a, here is a meme that I saw on Facebook that indicates the difference between a million and a billion. Sometimes we, we, we generally just don't have a good perception of what that is. People talk about millions of dollars or billions of dollars and, and things happening us here. Well, so what really is the difference between a million and a billion? Well, this meme kind of illustrates it. People don't have a strong intuitive sense of how much bigger one billion is than one million. One million seconds is 11 days. One billion seconds is 31 and a half years. That's why billionaires can often buy what they want to achieve. Stick with us. Watch for our next episode of the Church of State series, uh, episode 3.2, Globalist, What's Next? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, may we perceive 
uh, the powers that are in the culture and, and, and that are trying to influence various countries. And, uh, and Lord, may we recognize that some of, the, some of these, these powers are, are powers of darkness. And Lord, we are called to be salt and light. So may we be aware. The Bible says we're not unaware of the devil's schemes. And well, well sometimes we are. We need, we need to have a, a bigger view of what's happening in the world. And we just pray that you would continue to enlighten us and that we may perceive what the threats are to our society. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed the message, hit the like button. If you want to see more like it, subscribe. Uh, this is Bob Manuk from RWM Blue Our Ministry declaring blessings on you and yours until we meet again. Amen.